Hey, welcome to the Nerd Stalker Tech Week podcast number 12, 13, 14. I don't know, I'm sorry. I am Greg Gloria, <laughs> aka Social Greg on Twitter. Anyway, and you are? I am Adolfo Ferranda at Nerd Stalker on Twitter. Yeah, cool. Let's start with that uh, Spotify thing I we, I dug up here. Yeah, so. this is like the violent episode, but we'll start with the uh, Spotify. You can look at this yeah, as we'll, semi-violent, but we'll, <laughs> we'll see, yeah. We'll start real slow with like music, and we'll work into uh, the danger zone here. Yeah, so. right, right, um, right. So, so anyway, um, you know... Uh, 200 labels withdrew from uh, music Spotify this week, so... Yeah, it's um, a it's an interesting sort of title there, right? Yeah, I, well, Duncan uh, Gear from uh, Wired, right. um, yeah. you know, had, uh, wrote about this, and, you know, th- there was a study that came out um, that claims that uh, streaming music is damaging the record sales, so a distributor representing more than 200 labels has withdrawn its entire catalog from yeah. Spotify, but also Napster, well, w- whatever, Napster, Sym- Symphy, and RDO, so yeah, yeah. I'm a little bit sad about RDO. But, it it uh, makes it sound like a really big thing, but it's really just one distributor, you you know, and and a lot right. of their the labels that were they were holding are mainly like these reggae and like different types of you know acts like that, and it's not a yeah. major. I mean, none of these are all the major labels are still on Spotify. Um, yeah, and in fact, yeah. they they have like a uh, what is it eight percent holding on uh, in in ownership in Spotify, which is interesting too because you know that what that study is saying that uh, what the streaming music is hurting hurting the the musician and 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 that but apparently it's supposed to be good for uh like who is it the licensing holder so i think things like uh, emi and and those type of things so it might not be trickling down to the artists themselves on a big level right. but on those people who control the licensing those companies are are making money on these deals yeah, I remember. Uh, I don't know. It was months ago where where there was this big joke that like um, Spotify and Lady Gaga, right? She right, she right, had like yeah. a million million <laughs> listens, and she got a hundred and sixty seven dollars. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so they started. Everyone started breaking down the math based on that, and it was something like, yeah, every artist, like indie artist, would have to get like ten million or whatever to make any kind of decent <laughs> money or something like that. Something yeah. completely ridiculous amount of downloads. Yeah, so. I don't know, but nah. you know the interesting thing about this holding company, though, or this whatever distributor was, that they actually asked their artists, "Do you want to continue?" So they gave them all an option, oh, yeah. and only four right. opted to to stay stay in Spotify. So I mean, I guess that's an interesting reflection on it too. And and as we see recently, I think it was Coldplay and you know the band Coldplay, yeah. and I think there was another band. Yeah. I can't remember another major band uh, decided against uh, putting their new albums on Spotify because they saw no benefit to it. Right, right. I mean, it's more of a neutral thing than I'm, I'm against Spotify, right? Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. you know, Spotify just happens to be one of the streamers involved, but you know, it's just, you know, is, is there something in it for me from the from the artist standpoint, right? So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you know, it, it's an individual decision, but I mean, you know, you and I both use, uh, you know, RDO and and a couple other ones, so but. Yeah, and and Spotify. and Spotify says too. You know, um, obviously this is really bad PR because it came out and that label is so, you know, that title of the story is so powerful. You're like, oh God, Spotify screwed, right? And um, and so I think other artists are starting to uh, probably reassess their, you know, if if this is a good good thing for them to do and. And yeah. also, but, yeah. but, you know, Spotify and all these streaming services and, you know, tech people in general have said, you know, this is, um, if you want to go back to the old pirating model, go right ahead, you know, then <laughs> if you don't have the streaming option, what do you think we're going to do? Go back to BitTorrent? Yeah, yeah I, exactly. I think so, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, then we're going to have a whole t- uh, podcast on BitTorrent. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. BitTorrent's top 10 of the week. Yeah, yeah. Um, so... Oh, there was more news this week, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. It, well, I guess you could call it in air quotes, right? News. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess Google uh, uh, announced that they, uh, or I guess they went from beta to release, release this week, right? which yeah. meant uh, the, meant we had access to the store now. <laughs> we yeah, can buy yeah. things now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I gave it a. I gave this uh, sort of announcement. I watched the freaking announcement too, and I was like, after it, I'm like, I want, oh, yeah. I want that much of my life back. I was like, meh, you know, this is exactly what we had, and I felt like Louis C.K. You know, in that uh, skit, how uh, everything's amazing and nobody's happy, kind of thing, where it's like, it, it is pretty cool that I can upload all my. It's amazing actually that I can upload all my music to the cloud and it can play with me on my cell phone for streaming for free yeah. or anywhere I yeah, go. Right. You know, if you have an unlimited data plan. Um, Right. Uh, and and now you know and that's been working for us that that have been using this the beta model whatever that's been open to everyone it seems like yeah uh, for for a while now and now their announcement yeah. is hey guys it's, it's 1.0 <laughs> you know or you can actually <laughs> yeah. buy other songs too yay and <laughs> and share it oh right. you know one they have this weird sharing model or whatever and oh whoopee yeah. you know I just yeah it seemed like a very kind of non event so. Yeah, it, it it actually was. You know, when I opened it up, it didn't say you know, I mean, music beta by Google anymore. It was just music by Google. So, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, you know, I I think when I saw it, it was like I had the same impressions as you. It was kind of like you know, my my app just changed and uh, mm -hmm. my. You know, my my life didn't. I'm still streaming then for the cloud, which is kind of cool. Um, some of their free music things are are, are kind of neat. Um, when you know, there's some pretty good um, artists that are actually sharing some free stuff or allowing them to share some free stuff. So, I just want to see what it's going to morph into the future. And I just, I'm not sure um, where they're going to take this um, mm -hmm. because it's just an, another model like Amazon and a couple other people. But I, mm -hmm. I think they're probably yeah. going to do a little yeah. bit more with it. With you know, with Google Plus and everything, so yeah, we'll Should be see. Okay. Yeah, so. okay, cool. Well, speaking of Amazon, right. an Amazon smartphone in 2012, one analyst thinks so. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I caught this uh, from um, uh, one of the one of the writers um, uh, that I follow on the, the Next Web. Kind of tweeted this out, so I retweeted it, and it kind of caught my eye. So I decided to dig deep. Uh, the Next mm -hmm. Web had this article. Um, you know, uh, the new Kindle e-reading devices, uh, you know, will be, you know, Boo. debuting in the next few weeks, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, the the Kindle Fire, you know, a matter Boo. of, you know, days ago, <laughs> suggested that the world's biggest online retail, uh, retailer will be launching a smartphone heading for release in final quarter of next year. All Things D reports on the new research note from analyst Mark Mahaney, who represents the Citigroup's research de department. Uh, Amazon smartphone may be coming next year based on our supply chain channel. Checks on uh, in Asia, uh, led by Kevin Chang, so Citi's Taipei-based hardware research analyst, uh, we believe uh, an Amazon smartphone will be launching uh, fourth quarter 12 that's a while ago <laughs> you know that wow. fourth quarter 12 fourth quarter you know? 12 okay yeah you know so i uh, don't hold your breath guys you know so let's we'll just kind of monitor that but i thought it was just kind of interesting that um this makes uh, this makes yeah, sense I right i mean you know i'd be surprised if hmm. facebook doesn't do this too you know um it's just i mean amazon's doing this vehicle with the tablets directly to the you know being a amazon store tablet and why not have an amazon right. store phone it makes perfect perfect sense sure well you know uh didn't they just release the uh, source code this week i think uh, amazon did or uh, that, on the kindle that's right, right. Huh? I'm, I'm not sure if right. that was for is, was that for the operating system i don't know or yeah if... i think it was it was the os it was going to allow you know the third-party developers to start to you know really mm. cash in on you know do, developing apps for it and stuff like that mm. so i wonder if that included um, the browser or any of that stuff but silk or anything well, who knows yeah i'm not sure about that but definitely the os they were saying that so you know so i think uh, you and i agreed that amazon is kind of the, the this this you know not not part of the big three but the the fourth one lurking right yeah so, i don't i don't know i would i would almost consider them big three i think think and yeah. maybe the four the lurking one being microsoft in my opinion it seems oh. like you know i i think bezos has <laughs> a, a really great point in saying that they're going for the 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 low end you know volume you know sales kind of thing versus apple's mm. premium price niche clientele and i think mm. both he said you know both business models and i completely agree are both valid business models very good business mm. models in fact and i think mm. amazon is the leader in that sort of walmart type of experience and amazon is the leader in that whole you know whatever you want to call it that luxury brand prada whatever type of experience sure. you know 
<laughs> yeah, that's true. No, Ferrari, I, I, the, whatever. Yeah, those are very good points. I agree. I, I mean, yeah, I think when you put it in that context, um, there's room in the market. And obviously, I think with the sales coming up this, um, you know, soon, mm-hmm. and we're going to have some pretty good things about talk about that a little later. Um, I think, you know, they, they are poised for that. You're absolutely right. Mm. So cool. So uh, you sent a tweet to me this week about um, the Pentagon offensive ah. cyber attacks is fair game. Tell me <laughs> yeah. more about that, my friend. Yeah, man. So uh, Ellen Nakashimi of the Washington Post is uh, reporting that the Pentagon has laid out its most explicit cyber warfare policy to date, stating that it directed uh, that if directed by the president, it will launch an offensive cyber operations is what they're calling it in response to hostile acts. Now, uh, these are, Hostile acts may include things like significant cyber attacks directed against the U.S. economy, government, or military. Uh, The thing is, uh, the report is still silent on uh, a number of important issues like uh, what are the rules of engagement outside these, uh, you know, designated battle zones. And um, what's really interesting about this, too, is that this has been happening for a while, right? This sort of all this stuff. But this is the first time that it's been publicly stated by the Pentagon. So it's we're uh-huh. we're finally saying, you know, it, it's on, you know, if if you mess with us apparently. And I'm sure every country <laughs> is getting their sort of cyber stuff together, yeah. you know. Um So now the thing is uh you know this security guy Herbert Lin uh at the National Academy of Sciences was saying is that the question is uh how and to what extent are they thinking about automated responses? Um such responses, he said, are fraught with danger. With without people in the loop, you're much more likely to do unintended stuff. <laughs> oh man! Well, you know, there there was a lot of uh, reports, um, you know, over the last month that China has been uh, directly attacking us um, mm-hmm. on, on cyberspace as mm-hmm. well. So, mm-hmm. you know, I kind of wonder if this is kind of their their just public, you know, approach towards hey, you know. We know what's going on. Here's what we're doing. And, you know, but I agree with you. This has been going on for years, if not you know, decades mm-hmm. in a way, mm-hmm. in, in, in its different ways, in different forms, right? But yeah. it, it, it is interesting these days what um, what things are being controlled uh, over the net, um, you know, with the grid and everything else. And, you know, there's, there's the next story, I guess, which is kind of a good lead into this, uh, which talks about, you know, cyber wars and stuff like that. But, um, Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that that was interesting. It was, it was a very, I mean, yeah, I think Washington post, right. So yeah, yeah. It's good. It's good that they're bringing this stuff up to, to the, you know, to the public and and making it more transparent Mm. too, because, um, Mm. this has been happening, obviously, you know, everyone's doing it. And, uh, and also, you know, I I remember when these guys, you know, it was spot the fed at black hat. Right. And, uh, Mm. and all those hackers and, you know, were in Vegas and like, you know, knew what was happening. These guys are trying to infiltrate and now they're just, they're out in the public and they're giving you their cards where the FBI or the internal, whatever, you know, the NSA (laughs) and stuff come work for us. They're recruiting right now. Um, hackers and stuff too. So, yeah, yeah. you know, white hat, black hat, whatever you want to call them. They, they, Mm. you know, (laughs) America wants you. (laughs) Yes, 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 absolutely. Oh, there's some good ones out there. So what's this uh, next one then? Cyber warfare, not the radical can actually kill. Yeah, I, you know, I, it, it was a different piece from uh, ZDNet Asia or ZDNet um, I caught. Um, you know, it caught my eye when I saw that um, thing on uh, my reader. And I, I, I read, you know, from ZDNet, you know, this guy, um, a professor at King's College London uh, argued in a recent article that killer cyber attacks would never happen. He noted that a cyber war must have the potential to be lethal, but hacking and cyber attacks are more akin to spying rather than killing. Um, Ridd added that uh, worries over killer cyber attacks were unwarranted because the actions would have uh, were merely a more sophisticated version of activities that occur within cyber warfare, such as sabotage, espionage, subversion. Wow. Um, but the counter argument to that, uh, which I tend to side with a little bit more, is that um, you know uh, Graham. Uh, uh, Tetterington, uh, the principal analyst at Ovum, uh, said that cyber uh, warfare may usually involve information theft, but the the premise that it cannot endanger lives does not hold true. Um, he he noted that on extreme scale, um, 
the Stuxnet uh, attacks mm, yeah. that hampered the operations of nuclear centrifuges. Wow. In some instances, nuclear yeah. reactors give rise to a potential of triggering devastation oh, yeah. and pl- explosion. I, you know, mm. I, I like I said earlier, I think that if, if something has the ability to to be controlled or be accessed through the net, right? It it, it can cause not. You know, you're not going to call. You're not going to kill someone with that action, but right, the, right. the reaction like, to that action. You fair cause game. Yeah, yeah. Be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So. Well, that's unfortunate. I thought you were going to tell us something like Lawnmower Man, like someone's going to come out of my screen and actually strangle <laughs> me over the internet, <laughs> or someone else. Yeah, I could yeah, do well, that to to yeah. Greg right now. <laughs> All right, Greg. <laughs> no, it's not working. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. The Vader, uh, the Vader oh, throat man. grip hold. You bring that up. I guess we'll have to have a podcast just on, um, you know, uh, weird, weird sci-fi um, uh, tech <laughs> stuff. So I like that. I like that. So speaking um, of uh, super killings, uh, the Mexican drug cartels again <laughs> in the net net news. How weird is that? Uh, targeting social media. So what's up with that, Greg? <laughs> well, um, NBC San Diego, which is near the border, obviously. Uh, uh-huh. uh, Deanna Guevara um, uh, kind of wrote a, a quick piece on. Um, so, what's happening is, is that uh, uh, these uh, drug car- Mexican drug cartels, you know, have been, you know, basically just fighting on the streets, uh, but they're threatening everyone from journalists to police now, but through wow. a new battlefield mm-hmm. called social media. <laughs> wow. So, so they're targeting so tweeting Twitter. death threats or something. What are they doing? Yeah, well, get, get <laughs> this: they're tweeting Twitter and Facebook users, and in the past two months, four people have been murdered Holy cow. for posting about drug cartels online. Wow! Um, can you believe that? Jeez. So experts say that the cartels have been keen to the power of the internet, of course, oh, as God. a wide-reaching tool. So in exchange, they have launched a violent and threatening campaign. Uh, the latest social media murder was just a week after a journalist posted a tweet about the drug cartel. So, so wow. I, I, you know, I, maybe they're coming after me because I said, Mexican. hashtag anonymous <laughs> help. Yeah. Please. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we might as well just make it clear right now. Mexican drug cartels, we have no position on, on any of this whatsoever. We are merely <laughs> uh, restating apparently what's been said by some other journalists. We are not journalists by any means. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We're Especially just, um, this guy right here. Mm. <laughs> me? I, yeah. Me? Me? You? I, I don't <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah. So Lawn more, man. Where are I, you? I think that was a good thing to, since we're talking about cyber attacks this week, yeah. you know. Yeah. I, I, and and I think two or three podcasts ago we were talking about you right. know, anonymous That's going right. after the cartel. So right. you know this is just the the string of the stories, my man, my wow. friend, in uh, the social media. So yeah, totally, dude. Um, <laughs> so, uh, uh, so um, yeah. Hey, are we ready for the tip of the week? Uh, have we talked enough about cyber attacks? Yeah, and, man. Uh, yeah, man. Everyone? Let's talk tips. Yeah, I, I love my my tip. It's it's um, well, of course I'm going to love my tip. For once, it's not on uh, nerdstalker.com, so I'm not plugging <laughs> okay. the site yet. Um, but I will okay. later. Uh, so this one's from yeah. Boing Boing. Thanks to uh, Corey Doctor for the tip. Uh, it turns out Stanford University is offering uh, free courses yet again online. So they did this in January, and it was so popular popular last time that they're redoing it again and it looks uh, mm. really cool so uh, what he's saying here standard stanford university offered three of their most popular computer sciences courses to the public this fall online for free the courses were so popular uh, stanford's doing it again in january um <clears throat> this time they're offering seven computer science courses so the courses are wow. computer science 101 machine learning software as a service Human Computer Interaction, which I signed up for, Um, Natural Language Processing, Game Theory, Problem Mm. Bill List, I can't even say it, Graphical Models, uh, Cryptography, and two Entrepreneurship Courses, which is really interesting. Nice. Um, The Lean Launchpad and uh, Technology Entrepreneurship. Now, this is no tuition, no textbooks, um, no set class times, and student gets the students get a week to complete assignments. So um, this is going to be really interesting and, and super fun. I can't wait to give it a go. So all of cool. you out there, you know, go check it out. Uh, we'll post the link or just do a, you know, just go to stanford.com or, or .edu, whatever it is, and, and uh, look for their yeah. online courses. I'm sure it will be posted there. This is really exciting. Wow. My, my type of class. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. <laughs> well, 
Wow. Okay. Wow. That, that's a great tip, actually. Uh, that was a good catch. Uh, I'm glad you found that one. That was th- that actually has a lot of you know impact, and from a class organization like Stanford, of course, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So what's your uh, what's your tip of the week here? Huh? Something as well, philanthropic you know, and big-hearted as that, or what is it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or you wouldn't do anything well, hey, consumerist and hey, like that, fans, huh? I am reaching for your wallet. <laughs> no, anyway, oh, no, you I'm, petty I'm helping man. your wallet. <laughs> I'm helping your wallet, my friends. Right. So, um, hey, it's Thanksgiving week, isn't it? Right? That's so, right. So, um, Black Friday, my friends, is the, the, the happiest shopping day for most people, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, uh, one of my friends uh, pointed out uh, a app that, you know, has been talked about quite a bit, actually. Mm-hmm. It's called Shopkick. Yep. Um, you know, TechCrunch uh, wrote about it uh, this last week or a couple weeks ago, and um, basically, Shopkick uh, is a service, an app that automatically recognizes when uh, you know you're in the store. So it's right. an in-store kind of detection app, right. right? Then once the Shopkick signal is detected, yeah. the app delivers reward points or kickbucks back to the user for walking into the store, yep. trying on clothes, scanning a QR code, barcode, mm-hmm. you know, and 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 hey, you're gonna be in the store anyway. Use your mobile to go ahead and 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 access the stuff just to get you the best deals. You know, yeah. you can get special discounts from stores like Macy's, Best Buy, uh, Target. Yeah. So um, yeah, know, these guys. Uh, it, I met know. the CEO. He was at GeoLoco, and I and on the show oh, really? a couple of shows ago. We talked a, a little bit about Shopkick, and he was saying mm-hmm. how difficult it was to put those. You know, uh, to deal with retail. Period. Um, it's simple though. The little transmitter they put in every store it just emits a tr- like some sort of tran- signal, like you said. Right, There's no right, HTTP right. or anything Wi-Fi needed or anything. It's just a signal right. that goes out, right. and your phone picks it up by this app. So yeah, and it's a free app, and you get awesome discounts in all these places. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, gosh, when you're talking about Best Buy, in fact, Sports Authority is in there, yeah. um, mm-hmm. you know, Crate and Barrel, uh, you know, yeah, pretty name, huge. good name yeah. stores. Yeah. yeah. So, I hey, that, hey, I'm going to save you money on Black Friday. This is my uh, tip of the <laughs> week. So, Great tip. Great tip. Thanks for saving us money, <laughs> Greg. You know, give me some. Give me more. No. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. Yeah, please. So uh, when's uh, the next uh, uh, SF New Tech, my friend? Uh, December 7th, uh, we just finished the uh, APIs one, which was really great. Yeah, um, okay. Had a really great turnout. Yeah, uh, December 7th, we're going to have mobile. So um, it's gonna, we're going to end the year with the mobile. I think we're going to have a, a Christmas party, but there's not going to be any pitches. So mm-hmm. the last pitch tech of the year for SF New Tech is going to be mobile, and it's going to be December 7th. And um, also, I'm going to pitch, uh, you know, uh, one of our events at B-Tracks, so China Innovators, uh, awesome. with the Asia Society. Oh, great. Um, so I think, Love yeah, the Asia I think, Society. Uh, yeah. They do great I, I stuff. Think, yeah, you, they they connect with a lot of people, mm-hmm. and um, so what we're doing is a uh, kind of a, a cross industry panel of Chinese business leaders revolutioning the China's mainstream uh, reputation through, you know, innovative products, strategic, strategic partnerships, acquisitions. You know, mm-hmm. so um, you know, hey, uh, I'll be there. I'll be streaming live both events, uh, December seventh and December eighth. So. Um, Anything you up to this week, my friend? I'm just going to remind you guys, uh, going back to SF New Tech, if you want to hear Greg live, uh, go to sfnewtech.com forward slash live. And uh, you can, if you can't attend the, sh- the uh, you know, the SF New Tech show, um, by all means, check it out. It's free to watch it live. Otherwise, you know, go and see it live is always much better. But, you know, watch the stream if you can. Greg is a, is a rock star. Thanks, man. Hey, I'm starting to do a pre-show interviews, so I'm yeah, getting some pretty awesome. good ones. On yeah, there. yeah. Good, good, good. Uh, I don't know. So, I don't got anything lined up, man. Uh, oh, I no. will be at Cooper, actually, uh, doing some really interesting uh, stuff with them. Uh, well, again, I'll talk about later. It's uh, like in December, mm-hmm. mid-December kind of thing. Um, okay. But more on that later. It's on this uh, sort of interaction design kind of stuff, and we'll talk oh, more nice. about that later. And Cooper is an amazing uh, UX company design company so c-o-o-p-e-r cool. google cooper uh ux or whatever and uh you can get a lot of information about them uh so a reminder for everyone to you know contribute stories to to you know for me and greg so we can talk about these things on on the podcast here uh use the hashtag n-r-d-s-t-k 
and uh, check out also uh, nerdstalker.com and you can you know listen to the audio or watch the video version of the podcast on uh, iTunes yeah. you know subscribe to us on iTunes or just check us out on YouTube uh, where we do have a, a higher res uh, video version of uh, the show uh, and just you know check out our the nerdstalker channel there you just do a search for nerdstalker TV all one word nerdstalker TV yeah. and uh, Greg how about how about you how we get information uh on uh, backstories and oh, uh, Tumblr you, and all that. You could, you, you know, you could reach me uh, on Twitter at Social Greg, and also what I do is on my um, uh, Storify channel, um, I post the backstories, all the links to every one of the things that we talk about on the show. Um, so yeah, I use it as a useful thing. If if people retweet it, they'll also be part of the story as well. So I give some love to a lot of the people who retweet us as well as give us original stories. So right on, right on. Um, you know. Uh, it's all been good you know it's been getting pretty fun because a lot of people have been get, adding a little more value to every week to us so I, we really appreciate that so. cool cool hey man had all a good right. time yeah dude rock right so on. um hey uh thanksgiving's coming up be careful out there everyone um uh, travel safe uh we'll try to do i think uh, we'll do a podcast right after thanksgiving right yeah yeah enjoy your time off everyone and uh if you eat turkey, good for you. If you don't, whatever. You know, eat some yams. All right. I hate yams. <laughs> yeah. Yams. Yams. Mm. Or cranberry. <laughs> and if you can. We're, we're going to have to talk about that offline, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> There's some hidden, hidden anger in that. Hidden anger, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, everyone. Have a good week. Thanks so much for watching and listening. All right. Be careful out there. All right. <laughs> that was scary how synchronized that was man god we are going to be olympic synchronized swimmers now if only that was an olympic sport we would have gotten the good medal the gold medal for that